sing it to him and let's lift it up and say I will remain confident in this Lord I will see the goodness come on can we make it personal to him let's make it personal I will remain confident in this I will see the goodness of the the name of the Lord in this place. Society said that today is the day of transgender visibility, but I know that we believe that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, open your mouth and release something to the Father this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Listen, we are excited that you have chosen to join us this morning uh, on this beautiful Resurrection Sunday. Some might call it Easter. The world can call it whatever they can, whatever they want. But I call it the day that the Lord has made. I call it the day that I'm able to breathe one more time and celebrate and thank him for life. Amen. Again, we are super excited that you guys are here and joining us this afternoon. Uh, just a few things we want to lay out. Uh, this is a live production um, of the birth, death, and resurrection of our Savior. Uh, with it being a production, anyone who knows House of Glory, you know we don't do nothing basic. So get your neighbor say, they don't do nothing basic. Y'all too quiet. They didn't hear you. Tell them they don't do nothing basic. They apostle is over the top. They pastors is thrown off, and that's just who they are. They love God, and they go all out. This is the reason why, because you don't go to your job and do nothing basic. When you celebrate yourself, your parties, you don't do nothing basic. So why should we be basic for the king? With that being said, this is a theatrical production. Um, there are strobe lights. There are uh, folk, smoke and fog and things of that sort. Um, so if you suffer from anything that may be triggered um, by flashing lights, we welcome you to join us on the other side uh, where this production is being streamed uh, and it will be less intense for you. So if that is something that you need, we are able to accommodate you on the overflow side and we welcome you to join us over there. Look at your neighbor and say, are you glad to be here? I'm trying to get y'all loosened up and comfortable sitting next to me, but y'all all stiff. We not stiff around here. 
uh, just a few ground rules. This is a very uh, short but powerful production, so I ask that um, you remain seated throughout the entire production. Uh, there may be about 86 people in the building, uh, but online we reach between five and 700 on a weekly basis, and we want to make sure that they have the opportunity to enjoy it just the same as you. So if you would be so kind to remain seated during the production, our cast and crew will be moving throughout the aisles, and we don't want anyone tripping or falling or anything of that sort. So if you would be so kind to work with us and that factor um, so you're not standing in front of any cameras or anything so everyone can experience the same way that you can is that okay we good with that all right I don't think I missed anything I could have I don't know it's okay if I did we'll get it later all right y'all good are y'all ready well we are excited as House of Glory Philly to present to you the purpose the promise I changed the word did I I probably did the purpose, the plan, and the promise uh, pr produced by uh, House of Glory Philly. Amen. Hi, yes, Taylor J live on the scene. Excuse me, woman, what's going on here? For unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Mighty God, Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, God. Lord, you sat up on the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. Your justice, God, from this time forward and for even more, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. Lord, we honor you. You heard it here first. 
This is Taylor J from Glory, 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 W-O-R-D. Now back to you in the studios. history. First, we begin with the miraculous birth of Jesus in Bethlehem over 2,000 years ago. Born to Mary and Joseph, his arrival was foretold by prophets marking the fulfillment of divine prophecy and the dawn of hope for all humanity. We have Taylor J. reporting live footage at the scene. Taylor? Hi, yes, Taylor J live on the scene. And it appears that we have the parents of Jesus, Mary and Joseph, walking in now. countless miracles, healing the sick, feeding the hungry, and preaching messages of love, forgiveness, and redemption. His teachings and actions touch the lives of multitudes, inspiring faith and transforming hearts. 
This is Taylor J from Glory, 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 WORD. Now I'm back to you in the studios. Thank you so much, Tara J, for that report. We seem to be getting more and more reports in of Jesus traveling with his disciples not far behind them, approaching Jacob's well. Do we have anyone on the scene over there? Catch water in the heat of the day alone. I come when no one is here to avoid judgmental eyes and whispered words. <laughs> You're not from around here, are you? No, I'm not, but I know you. I know about your five husbands and the man you're with now. Not too much on me. You're a prophet? What right do you have to judge me at my, at my ancestral well? I do not come to judge, but to offer you eternal water. Living water? How can you provide such a thing? I am the living water. Those that drink it from me will never thirst again. Could it be the long-awaited Messiah? I am he. Time has come for true worshipers to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Don't look at your past. Just receive salvation. Please, give me this living water so that I might never thirst again. April, do we have you on the scene? Between Jesus and the Samaritan woman, despite cultural and social barriers, Jesus engages her in conversation, revealing her deep spiritual thirst. He offers her living water, a symbol of eternal life transcending societal norms and showcasing his divine grace. People of God, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. Begin, I'm sorry, worship the Father, but the hour is coming. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father with spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Here's the woman at the well. You look different. What has changed about you?
always signs that this thing that's going on out here with Jesus healing the sick and doing miraculous signs, miracles, and wonders. Have you ever heard of anything like this before? Never heard of anything like this, Renee, but there is so much more going on. We just constantly are getting reports in. Wow, this is just blowing my mind. I'm not used to anything like this. Wow. In the midst of a bustling crowd, a woman for 12 years from a debilitating issue of blood, summoned the courage to reach out and touch the hem of Jesus' garment. Filled with suffering, unwavering faith in his healing power, she believed that even a mere touch would be restoration. In an instant, her faith was renewed and she was miraculously healed. This powerful encounter serves as a reminder of Jesus's love for us. And as we continue to just get more and more reports coming in of everything that Jesus has been doing, Renee, this is just overwhelming. Oh my gosh. Sandra, I can't believe it. I'm telling you, I don't even know. It's like, I'm getting chills just even thinking about what's going on. Have you ever experienced anything like I this? I have not, but I'm hearing a report, Renee. We have something else coming in. Do we have anyone on the scene right now? Hi, yes. Taylor J live on the scene. On the roadside, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, cries out for mercy as Jesus passes by. Undeterred by the crowd's rebukes, he persists in his plea, demonstrating an unwavering faith. In response, Jesus grants him sight, illustrating the transformative power of Jesus. We have him here now, ready to give a live report. Excuse me, sir. Can you tell me what happened when you encountered this Jesus? Yes, I was sitting by the highway begging, and I heard that Jesus of Nazareth was uh, passing by. And I shouted with a loud voice, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And the people told me to be quiet and hold my peace. And I shouted even louder, Jesus, you son of David, have mercy upon me. And <clears throat> he came over to me and he said, son, what were you that I do unto thee? And I said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And he laid his hands upon me and I received my sight. You mean to tell me just by him laying his hands upon you, you were able to see? Look, believe whatever you want. I know that I once was blind, but now I, I see. You heard it here first. This is Taylor J from Glory, 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 WORD. Now back to you in the studios for more upcoming reports. Just another sign of Jesus' healing power, just touching that man by the side of the road. Wow, 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 wow. I'm, I'm telling you, oh, Sandra, this is so amazing. I've never experienced anything like this. And the, and to think that the people are literally saying this man is, is healing, where is he getting his power from? Oh man, we have no idea where it's coming from, but we are just glad that it's coming. But hold on, I, I, I hear something else coming in. I'm having another report. Wow. Okay guys, I see here that in a humble act of devotion, a woman, she anoints Jesus' feet with her costly perfume washing them with her tears and drying it with her hair. Jesus acknowledges her sincerely offering forgiveness and grace and commending her profound display of love and repentance.
Gathered with his disciples for the Passover meal, Jesus instituted the sacrament of communion. Breaking bread, sharing wine, he symbolizes his impending sacrifice, imparting teachings of love, humility, and service. What is going on? That evangelist is back on the scene. Oh my goodness, is the crowd taking communion? Wow, wow, this is amazing. Here we have the footage. Take a look. We're now going to partake in communion together as a family, in Jesus' name. We thank God for the live performances. <laughs> Hallelujah. It says, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthy shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of that cup. So I'm going to ask everybody right now to open your communion. Can you first please take the bread, which represents the body of Jesus Christ? Just say amen once you open it. All right, let us all partake. Now, after everybody has said, I repent, everybody, I repent in the name of Jesus for everything and anything that's not like you, that might be in my heart, my soul, or my mind. In the name of Jesus, I ask that as you open up the blood, which is our juice, that we will all partake. Amen. In Jesus' name. 
and you may all drink. Only you are the source Amen. of my strength. Oh. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus grapples with the weight of impending crucifixion. Surrounded by his disciples,
the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus grapples with the weight of impending crucifixion. Surrounded by his disciples, he prays fervently, submitting to the Father's will. Amidst profound anguish and human frailty, tearing in Gethsemane. My Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I, but as you will. In moments of darkness, I plead. Pray for relief for the cup to flee. Yet in the silence, I come to know the cup holds the strength to help me grow. Within its confines, courage lies and wisdom to see through tear-filled eyes. Though the journey may be steep and tough. In the cup, I find more than enough. In the depths of prayer, I find my way. Embracing the challenge, come what may. For everything I need is in the cup. I'll drink its contents and rise. Stand up, though the path may be steep and the road rough. I'll press on. We're strong enough for everything we need is in the cup. Drink deep and rise. Never give up. ladies and gentlemen as we said the reports are continuing to come in but I don't know we're, we're hearing something going on right now and out what's all the commotion going on out there I, I'm, I'm not sure what's happening but I, I think we're hearing some live chanting what's happening here do we have anyone that may happen to be on the scene to be able to give us a report of what might be going on down there because it's just so loud right now is anyone on the scene Hi, yes, Taylor J live on the scene. All this live chanting. Excuse me, what's going on here? All I know is this man just showed up talking about he the son of God. Flipping over tables and starting trouble and whatnot. Crucify him. If you be the son of God, come down off that cross right now. Crucify him. Crucify him. You heard it here first. Now we have live footage. Take a look. Oh, Lord, I shall never know the precious 
precious Lamb of God. Here at Golgotha, Jesus endures agony and ridicule as he hangs on the cross, bearing the sins of humanity. Despite the darkness, as you saw, he offers forgiveness, exemplifying sacrificial love and redemption. Now, following his crucifixion, Jesus shrouding the world in uncertainty. This is such a travesty. Yet on the third day, the tomb was found empty and witnesses have reported this encounters with the living Christ. The resurrection of Jesus signifies victory over sin and death, illuminating a path to eternal life. Wow, things are looking up for those who had this belief in Jesus. This is Taylor J from Glory, 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 W-O-R-D. Now back to you in the studios. Oh, oh, oh. his glorious resurrection appearing to his disciples Jesus triumphantly defeats death offering eternal hope and salvation to all who believe
Amen. Come on, can we give Jesus a praise? Come on, I think that deserves a standing ovation. Come on, can we just stand up for what God has done in this place? You know, we got to be a little bit extra. It can't just be the death, the burial, and the resurrection. We got to add the birth and the life in this. Come on, if you understand that he is not just in the grave, but he is resurrected with all power in his hand. Come on, can we just say hallelujah all over this building? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. You guys can be seated. Amen. If you're part of the cast, you can find a chair if you can. If not, y'all going to have to go to the overflow. Amen. But feel free to sit on the stage wherever you are. Amen. We ain't got no firefighters or no cops here, so we may not get shut down today. Amen. Um, but we definitely just thank God for the goodness of God. Amen. Anybody just excited just to be alive? Amen. All you got to do is watch the news to find all enough reasons why some of us don't even deserve to be here. But the fact that we're here is because of nothing but the grace and the mercy of God. I think this is a good place in the service because you're probably sitting next to somebody that got some money. Uncle Chuck, we, 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 we left here around like 11 o'clock last night, and, and my wife was like, I'm waiting for you at Wendy's. I'm like, why are you waiting for me? Just get the food. Let's get in the house, because I'm waiting to use your card. Amen? And so you're sitting next to somebody that got some money. Amen? Because this is a, a house, amen, and we call it House of Glory. We, we are big on family. And so do me a favor. Just take about 30 seconds to five minutes if you choose to, and just love on somebody sitting next to you. Amen. That some of you may be sitting to somebody that you've never seen in your life. Amen. We call this the great family reunion. And so I want you to literally get up out your feet. Amen. Cast, let's intermingle, and good love on about five to 10, 15 people that's in the building. Amen. Some of y'all, what's going on? Some of y'all didn't move. I said, get up out your seat and go love on somebody. For those of you guys that are on the broadcast, we just say welcome home, welcome on. Do us a favor and put your name, put the state, city, country that you're tuning in from so that those of our family can shout you out. Amen. We th definitely thank you for choosing to tune into this broadcast. Amen, amen, amen. Um, so once again, once again, we just want to welcome you guys to, um, you can pull them out, just one second. Um, once again, we just want to welcome you guys to House of Glory Philly, that where we are a little bit extra. Um, I'm not going to even lie, I miss Pastor Darrell's opening remarks, because I done lost my iPad when I walked in here, Did, don't know where my script was. 
the thing over there wasn't working the way it should work in it, so I kind of missed the epic uh, opening. Uh, but one of the reasons why we chose to do what we did today is because uh, how many of us have been in church? Don't rate, don't just look straight. You've been in church 40, 50 years. They've been hearing the same scriptures, the same seven last sayings, seeing the same um, people, the same preaching, the same teaching. But one of the things that the Lord said this year um, was don't just tell the people, show the people, right? And I think one of the things, especially for Resurrection Sunday, or if you call it Easter Sunday, um, I think that sometimes when we disassociate um, everything that happened prior, it, it misses the weight of what actually occurred. And so in order for you to understand the impact of the resurrection, you kind of got to understand the birth. You kind of got to understand the, 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 the woman at the well. If I could just put an exegetical point right here, you do realize that the reason why Jesus had to go through Samaria and the reason why God, Jesus had to spend a little bit extra time with some women because he knew the men was going to be in hiding. Y'all missed it. And so that, that for some of you that feel like, you know, I'm, I'm not anybody, I'm just an ordinary person. No, God, the reason why God pursued you, because you have no idea that God may need you later to go testify that he is here and he is risen. Amen. And so there was a few different scenes, the blind Bartimaeus scene, the woman um, at the well, the, the woman with the alabaster box, uh, that all relates and all points to the crucifixion that it wasn't just for us. And, and, and it wasn't just for him. But one of the things that I pray that you even just understood when Jesus was on the cross, and I think we had one of the best secondary Jesus on this side of the planet. Amen. I think it was a few Jesuses in the play, but amen, we, we had the best ones. But, but when you saw him on that cross, he was just not on the cross because he ain't had nothing better to do. He was just not on that cross because he needed something to do on a Saturday. But I want us to understand that the reason why he was on that cross is because he had us in mind. That some of the choices, some of the actions, some of the decisions that we made, uh, that we no longer have to bear it because when he said it is finished, uh, it meant it was finished. And so we're not just here even to celebrate the crucifixion. We're, cel we're here to celebrate the resurrection, the perpetual work of the cross. Amen. And so we are so excited to be able to do what we did today. Were you blessed today? It was a lot of work. Some people got cussed out. Amen. We had to get some things in order. Amen. We ain't lying in the house of God. Um, but one thing that we understand that God was glorified today. And so I think the only thing left that's befitting in this moment is just to begin to just to create a moment to offer Christ. Right? Because the resurrection to somebody that does not have Christ is nothing more than just another story. And so I, I, want, I want you to do me a favor and help me out in this moment, not a moment of manipulation, but a moment of really just true understanding of what Christ did on Calvary. I want you to just look to your neighbor on your left and look to your neighbor on the right. Amen. Sometimes we put the minister to do this, but I'm, I'm going to activate you guys as evangelists. And I want you to ask that person sitting next to you, even if you're standing, ask that person sitting next to you, um, do you know Jesus? We're not talking about secondhand account, right? We're not talking about, well, yeah, I heard him from my grandmother and heard him from my grandfather, my auntie, my aunt. No, I'm saying, like, do you have a personal relationship with Christ? Come on, I, I, know, I know you're used to not talking in church, but I need you to talk to your neighbor. Come on, we got some souls to win this year. Amen. If they say yes, we can praise God. But if they say no, I want you to ask that neighbor, do you want to get to know him? Come on, look at, look at your neighbor. Come on, talk to your neighbor. Come on, is there one that's here that has never accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? No dramatic music, no thing. But we don't want to make sure that if you were to die today or tomorrow, do you understand and would you even know where you're going? He didn't come out of the grave for you to be dead in the grave. The Bible says to be absent from the body means to be present with the Lord. Amen. 
Is there one? Is there one? Look at the neighbor one more time and say, are you sure? Do you know him? Amen. Come on, let's give God praise. Amen. We just going to assume that we have all believers in this room. Amen. Where, where's Naya? Is Naya in the room? She's ready. Um, so at this time, we just want to just give our acknowledgments before we do our announcements and our offering. And we out of here. Um, they were a little bit concerned about the play being too long, and I most assuredly told them, I promise you, it will be a lot shorter than what I preach. Amen. I'm probably the most long-winded person in Philadelphia. Amen. I'm thorough, but I'm long-winded. Amen. And so one of the things that we want to do um, is, is just give our acknowledgement today. Um, I had, you know, just put it out there of what God uh, put on our heart, and everything seamlessly came together. Um, you know, we, 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 we a little bit throw it off of a church. Amen. We have a church that ride. Amen. And so can we just give a God, a, give a shout of praise um, for House of Glory Philly. Amen. And our extended family. Come on, if you were a part of the production, can you just stand up one more time or just wave if you're already standing up, if you're a part of the production. Amen. One of the things that they were concerned about was, you know, if, 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 if a lot of us are in the production, who's going to be in, in, in the pews? Amen. Look, Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. And so if you're in the audience and this is your first time here, come on. Can we just shout you out? Amen. Amen. I did order some food for afterwards, but they ate all the donuts before service. So if y'all ain't got no food to leave, it's because they ate all the donuts. Like, no, it's like, no, it's like, no. Um, but truly, House of Glory Philly, we just want to thank you guys so much for being obedient, um, yielding to what God has done in this place. It was surely a move, and it was a learning experience. Amen. Come on, raise your hand if you felt stretched in the house. Amen. But God will never stretch you to break you. Amen. Uh, we also want to shout out um, two specific ministries, a few specific ministries. Uh, can we give a round of applause to our media team? If you've, never been a, if you've never been to a service, then this may not mean anything. I'm a bootleg contractor, um, and so we, we spent uh, uh, quite a penny. Um, doing some things that I felt was necessary for us to have the production feel, amen. Um, and so I want to shout out our entire media team that we was installing lights yesterday for this, to do this. Come on, y'all can do a lot better than that, our media team. Yeah, I, I, now one of them is not here, but the other one is here. Um, because, you know, if it's House of Glory Philly, we got to do it uh, in decency and in order, and we got to do it in excellence. And so there was a message that was sent out, and, you know, they're probably um, the most incognito couple that we have in the ministry, amen. And so all of the beautiful decor that you see on a regular basis, that is none other than Sister Janine, amen. Stand on your feet, amen. Her husband is not here, but her husband built the sets and the props, and so the crosses um, and the tomb, amen. And when they were describing it, I'm like, how are we going to get this in the sanctuary? And when I finally saw it, I was like, yo, this is about to be dope. We may got to do this thing one more time because I didn't get a chance to do my fog machine, and so I wanted my fog machine to play. So we might got to run it one more again, one more again. And so to our design team, our set designers, we just want to thank you guys so much, Amen. Um, I'm going to do these three first, amen. I've been around them for a long time. We've been through so many different seasons. Uh, can we give God a praise for Jada, Dallas, and Jordan, amen. Um, J J uh, 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 they're, they're Apostle Debbie's daughters, amen, who, who have been, I don't know if their spirit is right, so we're just going to leave them in the back. <laughs> It's got um, Jada, Dallas, and Jordan. Just come and join us for a minute. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We just want to acknowledge you today. Fix your face. Fix <laughs> Amen. 
um, when, when we came into each other's lives, they were l l not little, but they were girls. And so at that season, they didn't have a choice. Uh, they want, Apostle Debbie may disagree. They completely had a choice this go around because they could have not answered the phone call. Um, but I've never seen them so cooperative. And so we might got to redo the last 10 years. <laughs> Um, but we truly appreciate you guys. Um, and, and while they're up here, we want to thank God for Apostle Debbie. Amen. Who directed the play, produced the play. I'm going to ask Mother Brenda just to come. Amen. Mother Brenda um, spearheads, you know, our card ministry. And because this was our idea, I'm going to allow Mother Brenda to get some words. God be the glory. To God be all the glory. You know, I, I'm just so grateful to be a part of this production, y'all. I told my doctor about a month ago when I went to see him. I said, uh, you know, I'm the oldest one in my uh, congregation. He said, no, you're not the oldest. You're the wisest. So I received that. I received it in Jesus' name. To Apostle Debbie. Apostle Maisha, and to our big, big, big brother, Apostle Nathaniel. Thank you all so much. Thank you all. You know, this was a collective situation here. It just wasn't one. We all had a part in this. And I just thank God that um, Apostle Debbie uh, graced me to play the mother of Jesus. That was my part. And I just thank him. I, I think when I yelled out my son, they wasn't expecting it. And it just got so quiet, but that's how it should have been. And I just thank God. Apostle Debbie, we just want to give you these flowers. And, and you enjoy them. And we just appreciate you, Apostle Maisha and Apostle Nathaniel. Yours is forthcoming. Trust me, it's forthcoming. As you look into this little bag of goodies, may it bless you. Say it with me. May it bless you. May it bless you. I love y'all. I Thank love you so all much. of y'all. Amen. Amen. And then our assistant director, um, Elder Shea, Elder Nashe. Come on and join us up here. Oh, come on. Come on. I don't know why they like to test me when I got the mic. Praise God. We just want to thank you and honor you for all that you've done. We threw this at them last minute. Would you say, Apostle Debbie? Last minute? Oh, praise God. Praise God. Um, but it was all pulled together, and we told Elder Shea, we said, we're sticking you with Apostle Debbie. And we said, you in for a treat. she call you at 2 o'clock in the morning, text you at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, but Elder Shea stuck with her and got the job done. So we just want to celebrate you. We want to honor you, and we want to thank you. We love you. Give me and make sure you share with Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to wait till you finish your hug. Make sure you share with Jesus. Awesome. One more time. Can we give everybody a hand to even our executive staff, those that are leaders that were not in the play? They thought they got out of it, but they don't realize they're going to be the stars next year. Pastor Nakaya, Deacon Debbie. It's like that. It's like that. Um, to DJ, to the band. Amen. We had our bass player pick up a gimbal. Amen. Can we give God praise for uh, Brother Nasir in the back? Look, every time they walk in this building, it's like the heavens open. Amen. Um, and I'm just truly grateful that we're a house where people just find refuge and safety in. Amen. Um, and so at this time, I'm going to ask our deacons to come. We're going to take our offering, and we out of here. Amen. Um, we can do it during, during the offering.
You, you know I'm tired when my eyes are twitching. We need Brian. He's a sign of that. to um, duplicate here a little bit. I uh, had something written down here. So uh, the heart of offering. Um, so in faith, offering emerges as a thread of profound significance. It is merely an act of giving. It's not an act of giving. It is a sacred expression of our devotion, trust, and gratitude towards God. Uh, though offering, through offering, we align our hearts with the divine principle of generosity, mirroring the selfless love of our creator. Let us delve into the depths of offering, drawing inspiration from the scriptures and reflection on the transformative powers in our lives through offering. Um, so in Matthew 6, uh, verse 3, but when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Second uh, Corinthians 9, 6. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly, but under a compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And if we can have the uh, offering trays, please. All right. So the ways to give. Uh, we have Zelle, uh, PayPal. Uh, we have uh, House of Glory Philly app. And we have the website. And as we give, uh, we give because we want to give. We give because we choose to give. We give because we've been blessed to give. As we give in today's offering, let the windows of heaven pour out blessings. We won't have room to receive. As we give in today's offering, let every curse, shortage, and lack be broken off of our lives forever. Because we are a paid and full people. And he gives seed to the sower. All right, you're free to give. Uh, we're a little bit unorthodox, so just feel free to get out with your chairs if you're giving um, by cash. Uh, Deacon Deborah on the side has a swipe for anybody that wants to swipe. We'll give you guys a few minutes for those that want to give tonight, today. Um, just, just real briefly, um, we just have a few quick announcements. Um, we do Bible study every Thursday um, at 7 p.m. Specifically for our, this may just come off a little bit rough, but I'm speaking directly to our house. Amen. Um, one of the ways that I kind of gauge um, indiv the individual level of seriousness for discipleship um, is through Bible study. There's no such thing as you want discipleship, but you don't come on Bible study. Amen. And so I wanted us to really utilize a lot of the resources, um, as well as this year we have a lot more discipleship groups. Um, and so uh, please remember the Marriage Fellowship is coming up. 
Um, the Singles Fellowship is coming up as well as, I think one of my favorite things that we're, we're, we've started is our Mental Health Mondays. And so the dates will be there. If you have not downloaded the House of Glory Philly app, please make sure that you do that so that you can stay in contact with the ministry as well. Um, as well as Saturday, May 4th. Everybody shout ladies. For all the ladies, uh, our next sis what are you, but the, the, the name of that is, sis, what are you wearing, will be Saturday, May 4th um, at 11 a.m. And so that's for all the ladies. I'm covering all costs for that day. And so there is no excuse for you not to be able to come. Um, normally we do tickets for that, um, but I've kind of d done away with that for this, not the next two. Just the next one, amen? And so if you want a freebie, make sure that you're here in the building on Saturday, May 4th, um, 2024. Dress to impress, amen? Is Naya in the room just real briefly? Um, can you come real quick and then the Apostle Mason is going to take over and close the service. Hello, everyone. Say community. Community. Uh, one thing that I always say when it comes to you, if you visited the first time you're a visitor and the second time you're family, and so second time welcome to the family um, but also a part of our family is our community too and so on it's going to be April 27th we are hosting a community workshop I um, mean there's going to be financial literacy as well as uh, CPR training and so we're going to be doing CPR training and financial literacy on that same day it starts at 10 30 a.m. that's going to be April 27th you are all welcome to join us as you are part of our family and part of our community and also get the word out um, for our mission is to discover uncover and fulfill purpose and we recognize that in order to do that we have to remove some barriers to getting us there and so financial literacy is a barrier but also for us to be a benefit to those that we are around CPR training would be good to be able to save a life amen Amen. Amen. Let's stand all over the house. We're going to dismiss, um, but we're also going to host the altar call at the front for those who feel like they are in need of prayer. Um, as much as we come here together, we do realize that we all do um, suffer or go through real life situations. And we know that life is happening every day. Um, it doesn't stop. So we want to offer prayer. Can I have my leaders come and line up at the front? Um, we want to offer prayer to those who feel like they are in need of prayer. We're going to call out just a few different things. If you feel like you need prayer for any situation, um, we invite you up. If you're in the room and you feel like God has dropped you or has left you, or you feel like life has been going on and it seems like God has not heard your cry, he has not heard your prayers, we invite you to the altar as well. Um, for those of you who are looking to reconnect with Christ, um, it's one thing to go to church, but it's another thing to know him and to have a relationship. If you read the book of Job, you'll read at the end of it where he says that, I've heard of him, but now after all that I've been through and all that I've lost, I've now seen the goodness, the grace, and the mercy of the Father. We want to invite you to really know God for yourself. Uh, we see all that is going on in the city of Philadelphia alone. Uh, we know that tomorrow is not promised to any of us. Um, so my encouragement today, I really push all of us into in the room to make sure that we are in, in right standing with the Father. Um, for there is no good thing that he will withhold for those who walk upright before him. Upright living and upright walking is still good. Holiness is still right. Righteousness is still right. And we don't just come to do this. We don't come dressed in any form of fashion. But God is looking at the internal being and we want to make sure that we are aligned. We are connected with the internal, um, with the internal God. So we invite you up for altar call. For those of you who are online, you can come up and just one of the leaders will come and pray with you. For those of you who are online, you can text prayer to 610-595-5557. We invite you up. This is not anything to, to crucify anyone. Uh, we are not here to judge you, but we're here to love you. And we want to make sure that God, we want you to know that God is here for you. He's here to tend to his sheep today. He's here to love on you that we will not, he said that he will never leave you nor forsake you. That God died on the cross so that you may have a life and life more abundantly. So we invite you to the altar to hear
hear from the Father today. Um, we want to let you know that you are bigger than this moment. You are bigger than whatever you're going through. You are bigger than whatever you're experiencing. You are bigger than that, and bigger than that is your God. God is bigger than any test or any trial that you may be going through or fighting with. So we invite you to come and get prayer, and we just dismiss today. We cover you today in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we call down safety and protection. We plead the blood of Jesus over everyone under the sound of my voice. We bind all backlash and all repercussion from the enemy. We declare traveling mercy today in the name of Jesus. And Father, our cry today that you would, oh Father, unlock and fulfill purpose in this house, Father. Oh God, call someone to see why they should live another day, oh God. Call someone to see, oh Father, that you are still the all in all, oh God. So today, oh Father, we invite you in into our hearts. We invite you in our minds. We invite you in our spirits to be Lord. Oh God, we invite you in to be Lord. Oh God, we remove every demonic force. We remove every demonic spirit. We remove, remove everything of Oh God, that is fighting against our God purpose, that is fighting against the God agenda. And God, today, we just say, have your way in this place. Have your way in this place. Have your way in this place. Let no man or no woman leave here untouched by your spirit. Let no child leave here untouched by your spirit. Oh, Father, today, may we hear your voice louder than any other voice. May we hear your direction louder than any other direction. And we declare that it is so in Jesus' name. You are dismissed. Feel free to hug somebody, just tell them happy resurrection.